In my last video, I spoke extensively about the potential effects of inflation on different asset classes and what this could mean for you as an investor, whether in stocks, bonds, or commodities, real estate, etc. Now, yesterday, the US Federal Reserve, which is essentially the central bank for the US, had a meeting and the messaging from that meeting came as a real shock to investors and stakeholders in markets alike. Now they had a very hawkish tone. They essentially signaled that the endless liquidity events or the endless liquidity supply and accessibility that we've seen over the past year, year and a half could potentially be coming to an end. Additionally, they might start to increase interest rates a lot faster than market participants as well as investors had anticipated. Now, what does this mean for you as an investor and why should you pay attention to how quickly interest rates start to rise? The reason that the Federal Reserve is now looking to sort of taper their support or fiscal support towards the economy is because inflation is creeping up and it's starting to become an issue. Now, when you have an increase in inflation, that typically is followed by an increase in interest rates. And the reason for that is the central bank tries to to control the money supply within the economy when they increase interest rates it means that you might have more savers you might have uh, less people spending and so inflation starts to reduce what's interesting to note is that the federal reserve isn't the first central bank to adopt a more hawkish tone Yesterday, the Bank of Brazil actually increased interest rates because they are starting to see inflation become a little bit of an economic issue. Same thing with Norway. The Norwegian bank signaled that we might have four rate hikes before the end of 2022. So what this means across board is that a lot of central banks are now starting to really keep an eye on inflation. And this really will determine how quickly they either hike rates or whether they decide to leave rates at where they are. The Fed's hawkish tone will add fuel and support to the hawkish tone from other central banks. Whilst some investors might argue that it's a little bit too early for central banks to start to adopt more of a hawkish tone because the economy and the wider economy globally hasn't quite recovered enough to perhaps accommodate rate hikes, I actually think that central banks have found themselves in a very dire position. An example would be that the latest jobs report in the US that came out today signaled that over the last week, unemployment rose the most that it has since April. So you have a Federal Reserve that is stuck between uh, a very weak economy versus rising inflation. And the one thing that history has taught us is that when the Federal Reserve starts talking about increasing interest rates, sometimes that happens quicker than expected by markets. And sometimes that's more of a gradual process. And so we could start to see an increase in US rates as early as the end of next year, which to some people is a little bit too soon. Now the danger with a speedy increase in interest rates within economies that are not quite buoyant enough to accommodate such rates is that you might start to see a reversal in the growth in economies. If you increase interest rates in an economy where businesses have to borrow at a higher rate and individuals also have to borrow at a higher rate, it essentially means that these businesses may not flourish or may not grow at a faster pace if you had lower interest rates because, of course, their costs of doing business, their cost of funds are a lot higher. And so that might start to reverse some of the trends that we've seen in the stock markets over the last sort of six to eight months. And this is something that brought jittery to the markets over the last 24 hours. So as a stock market investor, it's very key to pay attention to interest rate movements. Of course, the Federal Reserve and other central banks cannot stay at low rates ad infinitum. At some point, they need to hike rates to ensure that, you know, the economy is um, not over overheating, all the benefit checks that have gone out and all of that could start to see a curtailing, which means that investors have less cash in their hands to invest. So this might mean that the stock market gyration that we have all experienced and enjoyed over the last 
year and a half could come to an end very quickly. This is a little bit mixed for markets because the conversation prior to yesterday was very much around the fact that the feds might overshoot inflation by a whole lot because they're focused on unemployment. And now it seems that that narrative has completely gone 180. So market participants have been spooked because they would have expected the increase in interest rates to be transitory, but there remains this huge risk of inflation and the Federal Reserve has essentially responded to that especially when Jay Powell sounded very sort of relaxed about unemployment. He basically said, yes, you know, we understand there are issues, underlying issues around unemployment, but they believe that those issues will be resolved as time goes on. The challenge with that view, of course, is that the data as it is today isn't quite supportive of this stance. The labor force data, as well as the claims data that came out earlier today, aren't really supportive of a strong or a stronger labor market. And so you start to ask yourself, at what point do we cross that chasm where we see a full acceleration in the labor market? Well, it's anyone's guess. Majority of the data available suggests that the issue is on the supply side. So it's about convincing those who have perhaps left the labor force to come back into the labor force and take jobs that are available. So when does that start to happen? This could potentially happen over the next few months or perhaps when there is a curtailing in the enhanced unemployment benefits that have been available um, over the past 18 months. And of course, this ties in directly into how confident people are about the health situation and whether or not they believe that the pandemic is under control. And the reason the Federal Reserve is very important to investors is because the US is of course a significant developed market and what happens in the US really affects emerging markets, emerging market currencies, trades and activities. So it's really important to pay attention to the Fed's tone how quickly they think they might start increasing interest rates, pay attention to inflation and the jobs market to really understand what potential this could have on your portfolio, especially if you are exposed to US stocks. So this leaves market participants in a very difficult position because you start to think, how do I deploy cash in such a way that my portfolio remains defensive regardless of what happens with interest rates? And one recommendation would be follow growth. So Europe, for example, still has a long way to go in terms of economic rebound and the European Central Bank still sort of has this reticence when it comes to increasing interest rates. So we might not see um, interest rates going anywhere soon. Banks like Bank of America remain very bullish on Europe, so it might be time to start looking at more of the growth sectors, the growth um, regions, etc., and maybe pulling back a little bit where the US is concerned. Because, of course, as we've discussed, when you have an increase in interest rates and the economy isn't quite buoyant enough to sort of absorb that or accommodate, you might have a reversal in growth and you might have a situation where the output gap starts to increase. So that is it for this video. I do hope it's been informative and helpful. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos from me. Until next time, look after yourselves. Bye for now.